Hi! Welcome to this part of my review featuring Runecairn, Warden Saga. This role-playing game is a Souls-like role-playing game, that is, it's similar to Dark Souls, Demon Souls, and you can play it with a single player, or with a group of players, or even by yourself. This also means that you can play it as a co-op experience, that is, without a game master. If you haven't seen part 1 of my review, please check out the playlist in the description below. This time we are going to talk about adventurer creation. There are six steps to follow in order to create your adventurer. First, you choose a name. You can also roll to find a name using a table included in this rulebook. You also roll for your adventurer's traits. Then you determine ability scores. You roll three six-sided dice to determine the strength, the dexterity, wits and spirit. Strength is pretty self-explanatory. It has to do with saving throws or saves, requiring physical power, lifting gates, bending bars, resisting poisons, etc. Dexterity is all about saves, requiring agility, speed, reflexes, climbing, sneaking and such. Wits is about saves related to interrogation, investigation, provoking, manipulating spells. Spirit is all about charming others, self-control, intimidation, persuasion. So, these are broad categories to handle all sorts of situations within the game. In a future part of this review, I am going to talk about the mechanics, the game concepts, but in this part, we are only going to take a look at the mechanics in a very general, loose sense, just to inform you about these steps of character creation and the different character classes. Then we have Bigger. You roll 1d6 for your starting Bigger score. Bigger determines your self-determination, drive, focus, and this is what stands between you and the hollow void. Of course, because this is a game inspired by Dark Souls. You lose one point of Bigger at death. If your Bigger drops to zero, you become a shade, a hollow being, neither dead nor alive, and you are lost to the darkness. Then you determine your vitality. You roll 1d6 to determine this score. It represents how hale and hearty you are. Next we have Resilience. This is your ability to avoid damage in combat. Resilience is made up of vitality and vigor. You add the two stats together to get your Resilience. If your Resilience drops below zero, you start taking strength damage. If that happens, prepare to die. Then you determine your starting class. This determines your initial equipment and skills. Each background has a key ability and key item. Your key item adds new skills. Change your class by picking up a new key item if you meet the requirements. You can only carry one key item at a time. So, your starting class does not determine what type of adventurer you are. And what you were does not dictate who you can be. Let's talk about the different character classes. First we have the warrior. In another life, you might have been a soldier, a guardsman, a shield maiden or a raider. Your shield was always strapped to your arm and your axe and spear always to hand. In combat, you favor the direct approach, relying on your sturdy armor to deflect any blows while giving you time to land your own. You start with equipment such as the linden wood shield, chainmail, bearded axe, ashwood spear. You have skills such as block, you raise your shield, you make a strength save to avoid all physical damage. You also have disarm, you hook your opponent's weapon hand, this is done using the axe. The target needs to make a dexterity save or be disarmed. There's also thrust, this is done using the spear. You launch forward to extend the range of your weapon and strike targets up to 10 feet away. All of these different skills have a cost in fatigue. Because this is a Souls-like experience, combat is very deadly. You could say difficult if you are fighting all the time without using strategies and tactics, you will die often and you will become hollow. Then we have the Scald. In another life, you might have spoken for the dead, burned sweet sacrifices to the gods, wandered the land weaving tales of myth and legend. Your voice spoke for all and none. You deciphered the will of the gods and shone their light on the people of the realms. You start with equipment such as reindeer hide, leather hood, 
Steel Sword and Sacred Waters. Let's talk about some of the skills. You have Lightning Knife. You manifest and wield or throw a dagger made of lightning for 1d4 damage up to 20 feet of range. You also have Shout. Your voice propels a shockwave that staggers a foe within melee range. You need to make a spirit save to disrupt an attack of the enemy and take no damage from it. Then you have Sunder. This is carried out using your sword. You tear through your opponent's armor for 1d6 of damage. The first occurrence causes the target to lose one of defense. Then we have the scout. In another life, you might have been a hunter, an archer, a scoundrel, or an explorer. With a pair of sharp knives and a trusty short bow, you easily made your way in the world, whether in untamed wilderness or cutthroat civilization. You found the paths and trails no one else could, weaving your way through danger and adventure at every turn. Your fast reflexes helped save you in situations where your quick tongue could not. When it comes to your equipment, you start out with an elm short bow, fire oil, a skeleton key, and hunting knives. Let's talk about some of the skills. You have dash. Deftly evade an attack. You need to make a dexterity save to avoid all damage. Failing the save impairs the enemy's attack, reducing it to 1d4 of damage. You also have lacerate. You need to use knives to carry out this skill. You slice a deep wound in your enemy for an initial 1d6 of damage. You roll 1d4 to determine bleed damage and duration. You also have volley. You need to use your short bow to carry out this. Fire two arrows without hesitation. You roll damage twice. And there is a follow-up called dire strike. You fire another arrow and roll another damage die. Then we have the seer. In another life, you might have been a wise woman, an ogre, a trickster, or a conjurer. The only things you needed were your wits and a hunger for knowledge. You sought to delve the mysteries of the realms and pluck forth the secrets within. You stayed in the shadows, called on for your counsel and power. Mistrusted by some, feared by others, and respected by all. You start out with equipment such as the U Staff, the Runestone, and the Bleached Jawbone. When it comes to skills, you have things such as Greystone. You cast a magical stone, as if it were launched from a sling for 1d4 of damage within 30 feet of range. You also have Slow. This is a spell. You slow down the actions of nearby enemies. You also have the Scyther Spear. This is another spell. You propel a spear of pure energy. Strike your foe with the spear for 1d10 of damage within 60 feet of range. A very nice detail about this section is that you have a complete example showing you how to create or generate an adventurer. And this concludes this part of the review. As you can see, the character creation process is very simple and very flexible. Depending on your equipment, you will be able to use different skills. If you do not like the class that you are controlling, the class of your player character, you can swap your equipment to use different skills depending on the situation, on your quest, on your goal. So you will be able to take on a myriad of situations without feeling limited because you are a warrior or you are a scout. Just change your equipment and now you are a scald or a seer. But of course, because you have generated your character with your specific attributes, that doesn't mean you're going to be the best at every action that you take, but you still have that flexibility. Maybe you are not as strong to be formidable in battlefield situations, but if there is a war or some situation that requires close quarters combat, it's much better to participate as a warrior. And likewise, maybe you are a bit clumsy, but if you need to infiltrate some place, it's much better to be equipped as the scout. At the very least, you will be able to get halfway through without alerting the enemies. In the next part, we are going to take a look at the concepts of play, equipment and items. Thank you for watching this part of the review. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. 
And thank you so much to those of you that have been supporting the channel by sending drive through RPG gift certificates. If anyone else wants to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. Once again, thank you, and see you later.